Can when you eat be more important than what you eat? Is intermittent fasting the key to weight loss? Are you thinking about changing your eating strategy to optimize your health? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Zabir. I'm a doctor and startup founder based in the UK. In this quick video, I'm going to break down what fasting is, the different types, as well as the benefits and the evidence behind it. Before I get into it, there's something you should know. There is no perfect diet. Intermittent fasting isn't actually a diet. Your diet is what you eat and everyone is different. Fasting may or may not be suitable for you. Anyone under the age of 18, the elderly, if you're pregnant, people with chronic diseases and illnesses and eating disorders should avoid fasting as well if you're unwell. Okay, so what is fasting? It's the voluntary abstaining from some or all food and drink for a specific time period. And it's usually for religious spiritual health or personal reasons. And fasting has been practiced for thousands of years and has been associated with numerous health benefits. Interestingly, it's also been used as a healing method for diseases in the past. Hippocrates, who is considered the father of modern medicine, once wrote, to eat when you are sick is to feed your illness. There are actually lots of different types of eating strategies to prevent obesity or weight gain, and they can be broadly broken down into three types. Calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, or IMF, and time-restricted eating, or TRE. In this video, when I use the term fasting, I'm going to be referring to both intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating. So intermittent fasting evolves alternating periods of fasting and eating. And this can be done in lots of different ways, but the most popular form or one of the most recent popular forms is the 5-2 diet. The 5-2 diet is eating completely normally for five days of the week and then restricting calories for two days of the week. And there's normally a 60 to 100% energy reduction on the fasted days. An increasingly popular form of fasting is TRE. Time-restricted eating involves eating all of your daily calories during a specific window of time each day and then being fasted for the remaining hours. The most common approach is to only eat within an eight to 10 hour window, such as what I do. So eating from midday and then till 8 p.m. and then fasting the other 16 hours. And the idea behind TRE is that by limiting the time of day which you can eat, you improve your body's metabolism and other health markers. So what's the science behind it? One of the primary physiological effects of fasting is a shift in energy metabolism from glucose to fatty acids and ketones. It's a concept known as metabolic switching. Let me break it down. Glucose is the primary source of energy for most tissues during the day. And in the fed state, insulin is the main hormone that is involved in helping your body use glucose for energy. However, in the fasted state, glucagon is the primary hormone and glucagon triggers the liver to break down its glycogen into glucose for energy. After you eat a meal, glucose is utilized for energy and fat is stored as triglycerides in adipose tissue. During prolonged periods of fasting, insulin levels decrease and the body's glycogen stores are depleted, while glucagon and other hormones involved in lipid metabolism increase. At this point, your body must turn to its fat stores for energy. Triglycerides are the main fat found in adipose tissue and they're converted to fatty acids and glycerol, which are subsequently metabolized for energy. The liver then converts these fatty acids to ketone bodies. And during fasting, ketones become a major source of energy for many tissues, especially the brain. The onset of the metabolic switch is the point where liver glycogen stores are depleted and fatty acids are metabolized. And this tends to happen around 12 hours after the cessation of food intake. Okay, so how does fasting help? Here are the three key benefits. Number one, weight loss. Both methods of fasting can reduce your overall calorie intake by limiting the time window during which food is consumed. And by shortening the eating window, you're able to reduce the total amount of food consumed, leading to a reduction in the overall calorie intake. And this calorie restriction can then lead to weight loss over time as the body begins to use stored fat for energy. On top of this, we've talked about the concept of metabolic switching, where the body switches from using glucose as its primary fuel source to using stored fat for energy. This shift in metabolism can lead to increase in burning fat and weight loss over time. A review paper looked at 27 intermittent fasting trials, and they found a weight loss range from 0.8% to 13% from baseline with no adverse effects. Okay, number two, improved metabolic health. IMF and TRE can improve metabolic health markers, such as insulin resistance and blood sugar levels. A review have found that intermittent fasting improved insulin sensitivity and reduced insulin levels. Also, a study on TRE in overweight adults found that it improved insulin sensitivity and decreased blood pressure as well. Number three, reducing inflammation. Both intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating have been shown to reduce inflammation in the body. A recent paper from Sachin Panda's team published in Cell Metabolism determined that TRE decreases genes involved in 
inflammatory signaling in mice. A study of TRE in healthy adults found that it reduced markers of inflammation and oxidative stress. It's also worth mentioning that fasting increases autophagy. Autophagy is the process which the body cells break down and recycle damaged or unnecessary components, including proteins and cellular debris. This process is essential for maintaining cellular homeostasis and preventing the accumulation of toxic substances within the cells. Autophagy has been shown to play a key role in reducing inflammation as it helps to remove damaged cells and debris that can contribute to chronic inflammation. Studies have shown that TRE and IMF can promote autophagy, leading to a reduction in inflammation and overall improved health. Okay, so which method is better for losing weight? Both strategies have shown to be effective for weight loss, and the choice between the two may depend on preferences and individual lifestyles. A recent meta-analysis of 19 papers concluded that time-restricted eating may be an effective strategy for improving metabolic health and preventing metabolic diseases. However, the majority of the studies included in the paper were limited by a small sample size and short study durations. Right, so are these fasting diets better than good old calorie restriction for weight loss? It seems pretty inconclusive. Another study in 2019 looked at all three methods of weight loss strategies and determined that there were no significant differences in weight or body fat loss in nine out of 11 studies. The choice between IMF and TRE may depend on your individual preference. Overall, the evidence suggests that both fasting strategies and calorie restriction diets can be effective for weight loss. If you want to learn more about intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, then watch this video I'll link below. Dr. Panda is one of the world's leading experts in circadian science. A really good watch. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next one.